Welcome back to its Let's Tab 59. Indoor video today, and there's a reason for that. There's always a reason. A, it's blowing a hoolie out there. I've just lost my bins. And after two years of standing, my flagpole's broken. The Union flag was laying on the garden. I've picked it out and I've bodged it. I'm going to have to buy a new one by the looks of it. It's bending again. So anyway, it's a bit windy out there. And secondly, what I want to talk to you about today, regiment headdress or berries, British Army berries mainly, how to shape them, etc. Uh, I've got to do that indoors. I can't do it out there. The berries will be off like frisbees. Won't better do the video. So it's got to be done indoors. Thank you for your support so far for the channel. It is growing. Um, please, if you haven't subscribed, have a look back through some of my videos. And if you think it's uh, worth subscribing, then please do so. Consider it anyway. That would be very helpful. Helpful. So, let's crack on with this. So, I've got to turn you around now with me. Bear with me. Here we go. So, I want to talk about British Army berries. Now, obviously, the Royal Navy have berries, the Royal Air Force, Royal Marines, etc. Well, I don't know too much about that. I'm pretty much certain it's the same type of styling and, and moulding that we have. So, when you first get a berry, now, I haven't got any issue berries to show you. This particular one here, it's a Royal Anglin berry. It's brand new. Don't ask me why. It's a long story. And as you can see inside here, it's rather nice. It's got a silk lining and it's got a nice leather band around the berry and a couple of ventilation holes there. Some berries come with this, some don't. The issue ones never used to have a leather bar band. They used to uh, come with like a cloth band that used to fray and stretch. And the issue ones also used to have like a cloth, not silk, like this, with a large piece of plastic. Now, what you don't have to do this, but what a lot of people do is remove this lining because it makes, you can see there's quite a lot of material in here. Sometimes you need to remove it or you want to remove it and some people don't. But it does help to a degree with shaping your berry because all this extra material doesn't get bunged up around the sides. So what you normally would do if you want to remove that is get a, a pair of scissors or a sharp knife and just cut along here, along this, on the edge of the seam and just carefully cut this line and out. You can see it's, uh, it's not attached there, that's just sewn. You need to cut down here and remove the whole line in if that's what you want to do. So once you remove that line and then you want to, you notice on the back here's a little bow, you would untie that, it's only a little bow, loosen that right off, just so that you've got the, the band itself is, is loose enough to fit your head. And then what you do is you would put that on your head. And once that's on your head, you can reach around the back and pull that tight around where you're gonna wear your berry, around the top of your head. Once you've got that, take it off, tie that up, cut those little loose ends off and tuck them away so it's nice and neat. Once you've done that, that's when you need to try and shrink it. And what we're trying to do is not shrink this leather band part. That doesn't want to shrink. We just set that to our heads by tying off the, uh, the tassels at the back there. We want to keep that the same size, but we want to shrink and get this crown, if you like, this top part of the berry, uh, nice and wet and shrink it down a little bit so it molds better now the way to do that i think the best way is to get two bowls of water a hot bowl and a cold bowl of water and when you put the berry in you want to make sure that the leather band like this is not going to go into the water you don't want to get that wet because that will shrink just dip the crown part of the berry into the water i then give it a ring out to get some of the hot water out put it straight into the cold water let it get nice and wet in there, take it out, and do that a couple of times until you've got the berry nice and wet. And that hot and cold treatment will help the berry, the crown of the berry here to shrink. Once that's done, then put it on your head in front of the mirror. Obviously, you don't want your cap badge fitted at this stage. And mould it so the shape is right for you. Once you've fit, uh, got it shaped correctly, then you can fit your cap badge. In this particular case, with this Royal Anglin one, you can see that the uh, normally on the berry, you get this little bit at the front here. You can see this one's been cut already. If I show you on the inside, it doesn't show you very well, actually, but there's a little tiny strip here. You need to cut across there with a standing knife or something, a scalpel, because most cap badges come with a slider prong on the back like this. And that goes in there and slides down. So once you've shrunk the berry, you then uh, make sure that the hole's cut, pop your cap badge in if it's a slider like that, 
Then put the berry on your head and shape it so you've got it correct. As I say, with this Royal Anglin one, because they have the Royal Anglin Regiment have a black um, backing plate like that, patch like that, um, you're going to have to look on the inside. You can see the little strip there. You want to judge with your cap badge against that. I haven't got a Royal Anglin cap badge. You want to judge where you've got to cut that little mark the right width to slide the cap badge in. So once that's all done then, I like to leave the berry on my head for a while. Let's just turn you back around. I like to then leave the berry on my head for a little while and try and get it to shape and mould how I like it. Obviously the cap badge should go over the left eye or near as damn it. And the right hand side of the berry, the crown of the material is pulled down towards the right ear. Once you've got it shaped like that, leave it on your head for a while. Make sure it's wrung out before you put it on, before you mould it, otherwise it's, it's like a sponge. It's just going to sit wet on it and just run down your face. So wring out as much of the water as you can. And then, like I say, um, what you would do then is uh, just shake the berry so it fits your head properly. Leave it on your head for a while. You can take the berry off and put it on the table on the side, let it dry naturally. Um, some people used to put them on top of the radiator in the block and, and uh, the old-fashioned radiators and let it dry out like that. But it should just dry off on your head after a while. And then your berry shaped. Now that's not the end of the story because as time goes on, it will start to lose its shape and it will need reshaping. And all you do is basically the same process, but normally you don't need to shrink it anymore. It shouldn't get any bigger, it doesn't grow, but it might need wetting down and wringing out and just reshaping on your head uh, just to keep it looking nice. Obviously you've been out in the rain, it gets wet and your berry shapes up quite cool. So it's not a problem. As I say, the cap badge should get over your left eye. You can see mine's just off the left eye a little bit. Um, as time's gone on, more and more people are wearing their cap badge towards their left ear. And I know it annoys a lot of people. Parachute Regiment, for instance, they've got quite a long or quite a wide cap badge with the wings. Uh, and they tend to push their cap badge towards the, the uh, between the left eye and their left ear quite a lot. And that's just the way the Parachute Regiment do it. The cap badge is that size. I think it's an airborne thing as well. I think the parachute regiment like to have their cap badge that way, it's their quirk. Obviously in dress regs it will tell you, British Army dress regs, it will certainly tell you that the cap badge goes over the left eye. Um, and the, the leather band, you know, shouldn't be too close. Mine's quite close to the eyebrows, but um, I think it's supposed to be a bit of a gap there, maybe a finger's width or something. It's all in dress regs anyway, you can look it up. But that's how they're supposed to be worn. Now, of course, not all regiments in the British Army wear a beret. For instance, the... Uh, the old Royal Irish Rangers, the Royal Irish Regiment, they wear a corbine. Some of the Scottish regiments have got Tam O'Shanties and Glengarrys. I don't believe you have to shape a Glengarry, that's sort of like the Thunderbird type style one. Um, but the Tam O'Shanty, I don't know if that has to be shaped. Obviously, I'm not in a Scottish regiment, I've never had to wear one. Uh, but I know the corbine, the Royal Irish, uh, what they wear, I mean, it's, a, it's like a 58 pattern sleeping bag. Great big horrible green thing. They have to smash the crap out of it and really shrink that to try and get it to, to some form of shape so it looks half decent on their head. So that's the Corbyn. That's something so totally different. If you've got any comments about um, wearing berries and how they should be worn, I'd be very interested to hear about it. Um, not all cap badges uh, have got the little slide on the back. Um, for instance, PWR one has got two little eyes and there's a split pin that goes through it, so that's totally different. There are some different ones. Some regiments even have cloth cap badges. In some regiments, the officers only wear a cloth cap badge and the rest of the, the troops, the ORs, uh, wear a metal cap badge. PWR, Princess of Wales, is Royal Regiment, my regiment, for instance. When we first amalgamated from, with the Queen's Regiment and the Royal Hampshire's to form PWR, very, very quickly, that to produce headdress, we went over to this colour berry from the dark navy blue berry. And um, they hadn't produced a cap badge at that stage. And so we were all issued with a small green patch, cap badge, uh, with it printed on in black. And we had to get those sewn on by the tailors. And that's what we wore for some time until they come up with this bronze coloured cap badge with the blue, yellow, blue backing on it. Um, also, some people's cap, and our cap badges is, is it's dulled down as you can see, but for instance, like this uh, AG Corps badge I've got here, uh, lots of regiments have this sort of stay bright gold or silver or combination uh, cap badge. When they went to Northern Ireland, um, they would paint those black. 
they would black it out because obviously, you know, we used to wear our berries on the streets in, in the early days of Operation Banner. Unless it was a riot, um, you were in a berry. You didn't wear a helmet. And uh, so obviously I didn't want this shiny cap badge sticking above your left eye for anyone who uses a naming mark. So a lot of guys would uh, paint their cap badges black to dull them down. Quite often they'd have two cap badges, they'd have a blacked out one for exercises or, or operations in Northern Ireland, and then they'd have their stay bright uh, cap badge for in-camp use. So a little bit on berries and cap badges and how you shape them, etc. Uh, I hope it's been of some interest. Uh, please keep the comments coming. I'll be interested to hear your stories on cap badges and berries and, and how you got on with them and what you've seen. I mean, I've seen some horrors. I mean, I've been picked up a couple of times in the comments my cap badge being too far around towards my left ear. But let me tell you, I've seen on the TV in recent years some of the cap badges, or some of the berries rather, the way they're wearing them now is incredible. I don't know how they get away with it. But may, maybe that's how it's changing. You know, I'm an old dinosaur, I don't know. Anyway, till next time, troops, it won't be long. Remember, let's tap.